Hey, usually, everybody. Ah, I was worried about you because <laughs> you usually, when you are at this place in the document, you usually say things. I know. I'm sorry. I was I was distracted <laughs> trying to install Zoom on another computer so I could actually see what the heck I'm actually sharing. <laughs> but I'm sorry. I'll stop being distracted. Uh, Manuel, are you there? Yes, I am. Thanks. All right. Slinky, are you there? Francesco? All right, what about Javier? Yes, I'm here. Hi. Hello. Tommy. Hey. Hello. Matthias. Hi, I'm here. Hello. Hello. Hello, I hear you. Um, Thomas, are you there? I'm here. Hello, everybody. Hello. Um, Timur. I'm going to put your name again. Timur, are you there? Here. All right. What about Remy? Yep. And Eric? Yep. And Slinky? All right, Christoph. Hi. Hello. All right, let's see. Hello. Hello. Who was that? I'm sorry, I got distracted. Uh, it's me, Slinky. Oh, Slinky, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was look, I'm, I'm trying to do too many things at the same time here. Oh, cool. It does show up massive on another screen. Okay. So I will leave Zoom from my other window. There we go. Hello, Ginger. Good morning, afternoon, Doug. Hello. <laughs> it always cracks me up when someone goes through every possible answer to that thing. Instead of just saying hello, <laughs> they run through morning, <laughs> afternoon, evening. It's like, okay. We're trying to be polite and politically correct lately, so well, I don't even know what to say anymore. It, it, no, no, it, that's fine. I, I understand if you if you if you if you head down the path of choosing one, then yeah, you're, you're kind of stuck and you have to say them all. But <laughs> it's just amusing that someone just doesn't say hello or good, you know, just just leave it at that and not even give a time zone kind of a thing. Just just amuses me. Everything's so confusing lately. <laughs> all right, uh, Vinay, are you there? Yes, I am. Hi, Doug. Hello, uh, David. Beck, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Is this your first time on the call? I can't remember. Yes, I just uh, got uh, to know about uh, cloud events just an hour ago, and I was just uh, interested now. Okay. If you would like to be associated with the company for attendance, let me know that name either in the Zoom chat or in the document itself. Um, go ahead and edit it. If you want to be associated with the company, that's totally up to you. Okay. Okay. Uh, Sergey, are you there? Yep, I'm here. All right. Uh, Brian, are you there? Yep, I'm here. Oh, let me just misspell your name. Uh, Christian, are you there? Morning, Doug. Good morning. Oh, we had two Christians just to mess with me. Hold on. Christian, no, I'm T Z O L O V. Are you there? Yeah, I'm just looking for, for the mute button. Okay. Hi there. Yeah, it's Hello. my first uh, call here, but yeah, I'm working on the, yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, I just on pasted the... a link. Yeah, I just pasted a link to this Google Doc. If you want to add your company name if, next to your name, if you want to be associated with the company, just go ahead and add it all. Yeah, it is you know. VMware, so. I'll oh, that's it. easy. Okay, I can spell VMware. Okay, <laughs> if, maybe. <laughs> all right, <laughs> Klaus, are you there? Yes, I'm here. All right, Ryan, are you there? Yes, hello. Hello. Uh, Ricardo, are you there? Hello. I'm oh, sorry, not Richard, Ricardo. Okay, this might be your first time on the call, right, Ricardo? Um, actually, no, but no. <laughs> yeah, it's been a long time since I It's joined. Who is it? <laughs> which, which company are you with? Uh, Red Hat. Red Hat, okay. I'll put IBM, okay. <laughs> Um, Please don't. All right, get everybody. Lance. I'm here. All right. I think that's everybody. Did I miss anybody for attendance? Okay, we got everybody. I'll circle back around later. All right, let's jump right into it. Um, all right, community time. Is there anything uh, that anybody from the community would like to bring up that is not on the agenda? 
All right, moving forward to SDK. We do have a call scheduled right after this one. I do have a agenda item on there. Um, it's more of a uh, bureaucratic process kind of a thing. Um, so if you're interested, please join. It'll be right after this call. Um, workflow. Timur, you want to update us on anything going on in the workflow stuff? Yeah, from, from infrastructure, we're setting up still a repository and working on that on uh, work on the specification. Uh, we have Ricardo who just <laughs> you, you talked to and he is going to contribute uh, our, our Kubernetes uh, custom resource definitions and some go types for it. So if anybody's interested in that area, you know, let me or us know and, 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 and it definitely can help on that. And we're also in the process of, of, of adding a Java SDK or like a SPI type of thing. Cool. So, kind of like the things going on and uh, just trying to get the community behind us or, or increase you know the number of people that, that expose ourselves to more and more people to get more help and that's kind of like the current status things cool any any news on the um what's it called the sandbox proposal um, no, the the SIG people have a meeting. The uh, sorry, the the app uh, delivery SIG has a meeting next week. So I was told, kind of like that they, that would be the date w that meeting would be where they make a decision. And I'm not really sure how they communicate that decision with everybody, but I guess we'll find out. <laughs> yeah, I haven't been involved in the process yet. I'm sorry, so I don't know. Okay, cool. Any questions about workflow? All right, moving forward then. Uh, before we get jump into the PRs, um, is there any topic that you guys thought I forgot to add to the agenda? All right, in that case, let's go ahead and jump in. Klaus, I believe you are first on this one. Yes, so this is um, about an issue actually a colleague of mine opened a few days ago. Um, he first saw that on the HTTP binding. Um, so there was, it seemed to be a slightly a slight uh, contradiction because in the, uh, I think 1.3, it's um, said that uh, the um, structured mode should be supported, but then in, in below, uh, I think in the event formats, it was then that it must, uh, JSON format must be supported. So if you have a should on one hand and a must later on, it seemed to be a bit contradictive. So I just um, added that implementations that support structured mode must support JSON format. And later on, I discovered that also the other protocol bindings have a very similar um, wording. So the ones for which it applies that actually have those two different uh, for, um, modes. So AMQP, um, Kafka and MQTT, I think that was. So I added those this change there too. It is of course a bit different for MQTT, for example, as it's only makes sense for MQTT 5, but I think the way I added it, it's, it's still clear then. And also for Kafka, I think in the older versions, it was not possible to do a binary mode. So then it's it's clear that it must be supported. But okay. so just to be clear, um, the must here, we believe it was intended to say that if you're supporting structured mode, then you must support the JSON non-batching. It wasn't to say you must support um, structured. And that's the that's the clarification the class was trying to make here. Yes, so in content modes uh, in, in 1.3 in the section, you see that every compliant implementation should support the structured mode and binary modes. So that's, yep. that's why that's, we did that's that. A, that's a good bar fix. Yep. Yeah, I don't think it changes the intent. So it should be safe. Okay. Um, now, technically, up until yesterday, there was just the HTTP change. Um, but then yesterday, as Klaus said, he, he noticed the other ones, but he made basically the exact same chain, textual change in all the other ones. The only thing that didn't follow that pattern, this was just a typo, was, as you said, it was MQTT, right? And Kafka. I mean, oh, yeah. they, they don't support structured and binary in all versions, so that's why it's a bit different, but I still think that the proposal also applies there. Right. So even though from the 
from the two-day limit thing, technically he made additional changes, but I think the, the, the changes are consistent all the way through. So if people do need more time or want more time, we can you know, feel free to speak up and ask for it. But it seemed like it was a minor change um, given, or minor change for the time period thing that we talked about. So any questions on this? Any objections to approving? Does anybody want more time to review it? Okay, and in particular, Clemens, for the MQTT stuff, you're okay with those changes, I assume? Um, I, I do trust Klaus, yes. <laughs> That's always good, yes, we all trust Klaus. Okay. He, he, knows, he knows what he's doing, what he's doing. Yes, okay, all right, last chance. Any objections to approving? All right, thank you, everybody. All right, discovery revamped. So this one was the one I mentioned last week where I went through and did a whole boatload of changes to the discovery spec. I think making it easier to follow, um, easier to implement. Um, I'm not gonna list all the changes. Um, I think probably, I'm trying to think what might be some big ones that I made. Um, I think probably the biggest one is if you query by types, um, the result is actually, let me see if I can easily show that. Where is it? Yeah. So if you query by type, then you will get a type value as a top level thing. It's just an array. Um, but then underneath there, you get the service definition. Because I believe the old version of the spec kind of implied you were forced to do two different queries. First to do a type query to get the list of types and potentially list of services, I think. But then actually get the, to actually get the metadata about each service, you then had to do a subsequent query. And I thought that's not very optimal for a user and it's actually kind of annoying. So I thought, <clears throat> well, let's just make it so that the return value from the service side is the same, regardless of whether you're searching by type or by services. It's just in the type case, it has a type on the outside, then you drop into the service. That way you get the full metadata every single time. If in the future we decide it's just too much data, then I think we could look at adding uh, flags that says, or that, that do things like, give me, that say, give me a reduced set kind of thing. But I, did, I do think it's important for somebody who knows that they're hitting a consumable chunk of data to come back to get it all in one shot if they really want to. I think that's gonna be important and not force everybody into a, a two query model. I think that's probably one of the bigger changes. The rest of it for the most part is I think more clean up more than anything else. Any questions? Is there any piece that people would like me to focus in on? Nothing? Any objection then to approving? Sorry, sorry, Doug, can you go back to that example that you had up first? Uh, oh wait, you mean the top of the spec or the type stuff? Uh, that there. Okay. Okay, thanks, yeah, I didn't have any comments. I just thought I saw some text error, but. Okay, no, and obviously, you know, we, we're gonna make lots of changes going forward anyway. This is just uh, the next round. Okay, any objection to approving? Oops, okay. One of the things I'd like to do at some point <clears throat> is um, talk about actually putting together code behind these things. So I'm not gonna ask for it today, but maybe for next week, people can be thinking about whether they would volunteer to put together an implementation of the spec to see if it's actually implementable. Um, and then we could start maybe doing some interop testing or something along those lines just to prove out the spec actually works. I, I figured that will probably expose lots more bugs than just keep reading it over and over. So anyway, be thinking about that for next time. Don't want to put anybody on the spot yet. I actually don't think it should be too hard to implement. It should be fairly straightforward. So Clemens, this one is yours. Would you like to bring us up to speed on what happened this, on this one? I did so many edits, I don't even know. Um, <laughs> So there have been a 108 comments on this, and I think I've addressed all of them um, in one way or the other. I think some of the discussions kind of dissolved themselves, resolved themselves, and then uh, there were some, some um, 
uh, comments to uh, with minor wording things or there are two spaces too many and uh, so I did those um, but I think I caught everything so I think my proposal would be at this point because this becomes a little unwieldy and to, to manage um, if there are no grand objections to uh, the overall uh, tenor of the document, um, I would um, be pleased if we could just put, go and put that in and then start bug fixing what needs to be bug, fi bug fixed on top of this. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I'm, the size of the discussion is now making it a little hard for me to go and um, address individual items. Okay. If, if you're like, I don't know whether I, I, I really don't know whether I missed anything. Yeah. I think I'm, I didn't miss anything, but I'm not sure. Well, we have follow on PRs if necessary. Yeah. But are there any questions for Clemens or comments? Okay. Um, any objection then to approving this as the first draft? You guys are way too quiet today. All right, yeah. keep moving forward. Well, just agreeable. <laughs> yeah, and that's it, agreeable, yes. <laughs> that's much better than the opposite, I guess. All right, this one was open relatively recently, but um, it is just a change to our community slash demos file, and it's just pointing to a demo that uh, this person has around cloud events. Uh, it's non-controversial in my opinion, um, so I, I don't think we necessarily have to pay too much attention to the two-day rule thing. Any objection to adding a pointer to this other demo? And if obviously, as a reminder, if you guys have other demos for cloud events that you want to reference in here, feel free to open a PR. Any, any concerns with adding this? Okay. That's approved then, thank you. All right. Um, okay, the rest of them, I'm not sure they're actually ready to merge. Um, does anybody want to go first? Otherwise, I'll just go in order. Okay. Um, Klaus, did you want to talk to this one? Okay, so um, first of all, it is depend was dependent on your uh, um, change to the discovery model. So um, I will have to change and adjust it a bit. Um, the source template will then be uh, under type, I think. Mm -hmm. So that would be a change I will have to make. Um, we discussed, I think, two weeks ago, um, if we should um, constrain it to adjust the uh, level one uh, templates they're suggesting. So I could add something, some comment um, to that it is recommended to uh, use, with a normative recommended, uh, to use just the level one templates, or we could um, do a hard constraint. I don't know. That is one thing. The other thing is that I think you asked uh, somewhere in this uh, PR um, if uh, it would make sense to further describe the parameters mentioned in the templates. And um, I thought about a use case where it might make sense. So having such a template could be a, a nice um, help for um, providing more um, uh, subscription UIs, for example, or tools um, tailored to a specific event source. So you could then by, by having a UI displaying uh, input boxes for uh, those uh, parameters you, that could be then derived from a template like this and below the surface, then a subscription based on these URIs could be generated. And if you want to provide tooling like this, of course, a description of uh, the types of the parameters or, or a length constraint, things like this uh, would be helpful. So, I'd, but on the other hand, it, it could complicate uh, things a lot if you do not just add a URI template, but really type descriptions for the parameters in, in the style JSON schema does. So I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe we first discuss just this and, and later on we can discuss if we add more description around it. Let's take this one at a time. Um, <clears throat> so does anybody have any questions about the overall concept of what Klaus is proposing here for a source template, either the entire idea or some aspect of it? Okay. 
Not hearing anything. I think the next question you mentioned was, I can't remember the exact word you used. There was uh, different uh, levels or degrees of, of the, the syntax. I think they right? call it Le levels. Yes. Levels, that's the, that's the word, levels. Right, so there was at least two different levels. Um, does anybody have an opinion on restricting it to just level one? Because I think, if I remember correctly, level two or other levels allow you to do really fancy substitutions and yes. loops and weirdly cool stuff, but complicated stuff. <laughs> Anybody have an opinion on that? Is there any need for that right now? Anything Klaus? level one? So I can so far mostly imagine use cases for level one, but we, on the other hand, I don't think if it breaks anything if we allow also the more sophisticated levels. I, I fully agree with supporting only and only the level one. Okay. <laughs> because I, I, I had our time so, uh, supporting this pack, so really, let's just support level one. Okay. Anybody else want to chime in? Okay. I have a, I was, I'm leaning towards the just level, doing level one as well, um, just because of the other stuff it looked really cool, but it just seems like it's going to be really complicated to ask people to support that. Yes. Yeah, but also it's... Um, it's not really useful in the end. The other levels are cool, but they are not really useful. Yeah. So maybe we should start with just level one and then we can always revisit that decision later if someone comes up with a good use case for why they need more. Does that sound fair to people? Yeah. Okay. Always easier to relax rules later on. Definitely true, yes. Yeah. Okay, so there's the two. So I assume you'll, you'll make a change to yeah. up, up to that. Okay, and then the third one was uh, the, more, the much more advanced feature of actually describing the actual variables. Yeah, um, so that's something you suggested in one of the comments, I think. Yeah, and I, I definitely would not want that as part of this PR. Uh, we could consider that as an add-on PR. Mm -hmm. I would want to keep this one small and simple. So we could talk about that one later, in my opinion, unless someone else wants to say, no, we need it now. Okay. Um, any other points around this PR that people would like to bring up so that Klaus can go back, go back and make his edits? And to be clear, since I didn't explicitly ask, um, just remind people, the, the biggest change is he's going to make source template appear under type. So every type could technically have its own source template. All right, any questions, concerns, last chance? All right, cool. You have a direction, Klaus. Excellent, thank you. Um, Slinky, I believe these next two are yours. Do you want to talk about either one of those? Nope. <laughs> okay, I won't force you then. Um, in that case, Jem was not able to make the call today. He warned me about that. Um, and I promised him I would just remind people to take a look at his uh, protobuf PR. He is still working through the discussions and comments and stuff there. So if you have anything to add to that conversation, please go ahead and comment in the PR. I believe he's still hoping to come up with a final draft of the PR for next week. So uh, don't wait till the last minute if you, if you have comments or concerns. Okay. Uh, that's it for the agenda. Are there any other topics people would like to bring up? Wow, I can't believe we went through four PRs in 20 minutes. Okay, in that case, let me just do a final roll call and then we'll let everybody go and enjoy the rest of their day and we can start the SDK call a little early. We used um, to fight more. Say it again? We used to fight more. <laughs> yeah, I'm waiting for that to happen. You know, we gotta find a good topic. Okay, uh, let's see, who did I miss? Uh, Rakesh, are you there? Um, yes, I'm there. Um, is this your first time on the call? Yes, this is the first time. Okay, if you can, if you want to be associated with a company, can you just put the company name in the Zoom chat and I'll put it in there? Um, but yep. if you don't have yeah. to be, if you don't want to, okay? Uh, yeah. Chen, are you there? Oh, I, I don't see Chen on the list anymore. Okay, so Chen dropped. Hamid, are you there? Yep, I'm here. Okay, and this, this is not your first time, correct? No. Nope. I don't think so, okay. All right, all right, did I miss anybody for the attendee list? All right, in that case, non-SDK people, you're free to go. Enjoy the rest of your day. 
and we'll start the SDK call in about a minute or so. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Yep. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. So wow. Oh, thank you, Lance, for adding that topic. So just uh, for you guys to think about while we're waiting for the minute tick. The item I want to talk about was right now we have basically one gigantic maintainers group inside the uh, inside the project, and that was fine when we only had a handful of people. They you know they bounced around between SDKs. It wasn't worth having individual teams per SDK. But now that we're getting a little bit bigger, we should probably start looking to add a little more formality and process to things. So what I was going to do or suggest is that we actually create separate teams per project. And I don't know for sure if I got this list right. So please look at the list, make sure the names are correct in terms of who goes where. In particular, Slinky, I wasn't sure which groups you wanted to be in. So if you want to be added to one, just let me know. Um, uh, uh, I have a question for you, Doug. How did you calculate this list? So I, I, I went through the list of people that are in the maintainers group, and then I tried my best to look at who did commits on each project. And if you had more than like two commits, I thought, okay, they're busy enough, they should be a maintainer. But to be honest, if I'll, I'll edit this however you want. This was just my initial guess. Uh, so, because, uh, so first for Go, uh, Alan is not working anymore on that. Yeah, I mean, he completely changed his job. So, uh, okay. I Easy think uh, we don't need it. Yeah. And okay. in Java, that's, I, I, I don't know who is Dustin Ingram, honestly. He's a relatively new person, but I, I think he's actually going to focus more on Python. I think the only reason I put him here was ah, just okay, because okay. I think... Yeah, yeah, yes, DI, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah, Matthias is not working anymore on the Shell SDK too, so... Okay. We can... uh, uh, what I, about I, Dustin? I, Do you want me to keep Dustin? I, I w well, uh, Dustin is going to contribute because I, I never saw any contributions for him, I think. Yeah? Maybe. Um, I, I put them there because I thought I did, but maybe I'm wrong. I can, I can yeah, remove yeah. them and, and if people complain, I can add them back. I, That's not a big I deal. Do, I don't see any contributions for him. Okay, so maybe I'm just wrong then. Year. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, in the Rust, uh, so uh, the Rust story is funny because uh, when we started, uh, I started with uh, Lazzaretti and the other guy is named Linus. Linus Basig, and uh, we decided to gather all the design decisions. We did some meetings for that, uh, but ended up writing all the code. So, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, I asked them to join, participate, write code, but they never contributed with code. They just did a review. So, I don't know, how should we end on that? I, I don't feel comfortable being the only one, honestly. But well, it's, it's up to you. I, I, I'm going to listen to you guys. Well, actually, let's back up before we continue editing the list. Do mm -hmm. people agree with creating separate teams, first of all? Any objection to that? Okay. Okay, good. Okay, so now let's go back to the list. Honestly, it's up to you whether you want to keep them there or not. I, we can always re add people later if they object. It's up to you guys who you want on what list. Well, if I would say let's keep him uh, okay. together with uh, together with Linus. No, Linus didn't even made any comment. No, because maybe I can manage to get them involved again. <laughs> so you want I to mean, put Linus I, back up here? Yeah. Okay. I, I wish I wish to involve them back again. Okay. Honestly. Okay. Anybody else want to edit the list? Um, Sergey, you're asking about Fabio. Um, I know he's busy on other things. I, I, I personally would like to keep him just because he's, he did so much work in the past and I know he's off doing other things. And so I wouldn't want to drop yeah, him agree. yet, but agree. I think he'd be a candidate for dropping in the, in the future. But it's yeah, up I, to you guys. I, I, think, I think we should not remove the, the historical contributors so easily. I mean, yeah. Because okay. it's not okay. fair for them. Yeah. Even if they are not contributing a, Anymore, it's not fair. Okay. Any other changes people want to make? 
Lance, for JavaScript, you're okay? Yeah, that looks good. In fact, I think we already have a subgroup or a, a GitHub team for that. Yeah, you do. I don't know. I'm not quite sure how or when we created that, but yeah, I did notice that last night. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Clemens, I assume C Sharp looks good since you just recently added John. Uh, yes, John has come and uh, has a lot of ideas, and I'm not going to stop him. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we've 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 talked through uh, a number of changes that uh, we both agree are necessary, and which I have not found the time to. But John is full of energy, and I um, that's great. And um, so, uh, yeah, we're going to do that together. Okay. Um, okay. Any other changes people want to make? Okay, and to be clear, these folks will be dropped. Any, any anybody see any problems or concern with those? Nope. All right. The other thing, as I was going through this last night, was um, we should probably then talk about how we add new maintainers. Um, I, my my first guess was to say fifty per, at least fifty percent, or I'm sorry, 50, more than fifty percent of the existing maintainers should vote to either add or remove somebody just to have it consistent across all the repos, but it's up to you guys in terms of what kind of process you'd like. Actually, let me back up. Do you want to define a, a shared process across all repos? Slinky, you're up. Yeah, so I think we should have it, definitely. Okay. Uh, and, but, but, but I propose to add also uh, a contribution bar, a contribution minimum bar. Okay. Mm -hmm. At least uh, XPRs. I don't know the number now for sure, but I think it's important to say, let's add, uh, I, have the, I don't have the number, <laughs> but <laughs> I, I, think, I think we should uh, put a bar in terms of how much PRs. Okay. And, if, and if it happens again, situations like uh, unmaintained SDK, uh, where somebody wanted to contribute, but there wasn't an opportunity to do that, because maybe somebody, uh, it, because the SDK was unmaintained, then we need to have another rule for that situation. Yeah. Okay? I, I, I don't know, but my first guess is that we need at least XPRs. Okay. Uh, Sergey, your hands up. Yeah, I just wanted to share some thoughts uh, because like 50% of existing maintainers can be tricky when you only have one maintainer, uh, <laughs> which means like it's either zero, 100% uh, agreement which is very easy to make, I believe, but uh, a bit hard to accept. Um, and for the at least XPRs, uh, it may also not be the best metric because uh, it also depends on the current maintainer and uh, the willingness to contribute because sometimes there is a huge will, uh, or a big will to contribute, but uh, unless some agreement is uh, reached with the maintainer, it may not be um, something that people would want to do. And just submitting random PRs uh, to get the maintainer status would also be weird. Although it would improve uh, the project. Hmm. Yeah, the the, the you know, uh, people playing games, you know, doing typo type PRs just to get that number up would not mm -hmm. be good. I, that mm -hmm. yeah, I've, we've all seen that before. So yeah. you mentioned concerns with those two things. Do you have any recommendations on what kind of criteria you would like to see added? Uh, perhaps uh, identifying um, the companies, maybe, because usually we talk about the companies. I mean, there are individual contributors as well, which is great, but uh, sometimes there is a, a company that wants to use uh, some of the SDK, uh, SDKs, and uh, they may also have a desire to contribute. Um, so focusing on the end users as the big groups of users and their representatives may also be um, an option. I mean, obviously I'm uh, considering uh, some of the cases we had in the past, but at least when we are talking about uh, an SDK, official SDK for cloud events, uh, which is a community driven project uh, from the foundation, I would expect it to be more uh, foundation driven where foundation is a group of companies rather than individuals uh, and maintainers. I have a comment there, but Clemens, did you want to say something since you came off mute? Um, 
Yeah, I think there's a there's a I think there's a f company element to this where um, uh, looking around this the the general space without this being a problem here. Um, I think one of the limits I would want to put on this is, um, or, or would be great to have on this, is a um, a reasonable bar that what that should be in the governance rules that a single company um, can't have more than X percent of the maintainers, whereby X percent must be under certainly must be under fifty percent. Um, and um, I think a third would be like if if, if it's if if it's a um, if it's more than a third, I would question the health of the project. Anybody else want to comment? Are you well, I I mean uh, the, <laughs> I can say right now that you know the JavaScript SDK has two thirds of the maintainers coming from Red Hat. But I, I would say that that, that doesn't necessarily, uh, it's not a detriment to the health of the project. In fact, the project is actually getting a lot more attention than it had. Yeah, that's, that, so I think this is why, why I don't think on the individual SDK, it's like if we, if we say for the SDKs, we're, we're basically going to make that a pool, a, a pool thing that works better. I but see. it's, so my concern is that, um, when you put governance rules like this in place and you allow effectively a quorum of folks to um, uh, decide who gets into the project or not, then once a company has amassed enough committers to be have a majority um, to control who gets in or gets not in, then um, the project has a fairly easy way to deteriorate into a marketing effort um, of a particular company where they could still put up the sign on the outside to say, we are open source and we're running in the, in the, uh, uh, in the foundation. But in fact, it's it, the, all the decisions are being made at corporate headquarters. And that's something that um, I observe in several places um, in the eventing and messaging space and analytics space. And uh, if we can, if we can uh, uh, prevent that early, that would be great. Okay, uh, Sergey, your hands up. Um, I just want to say that on one hand, I, uh, I think it's exciting to see a uh, company's commitment to uh, the cloud events, um, be it uh, Red Hat, Google, or any other company. But uh, I think Clements made a good point about, uh, and I, if, if I may, I would like to call it a diversity of uh, thinking because when uh, the majority of SDKs are maintained by the same company, you may have a problem of uh, being uh, very um, like biased uh, towards uh, this company's needs. And um, I think Red Hat is doing a great job right now uh, and is listening to, um, to other companies, but uh, it's a bit disturbing to see that uh, more than half of SDKs are being maintained by uh, Red Hat at the moment, or at least uh, being actively developed by Red Hat. So <clears throat> it's interesting. And let, me, let me pick on you, Clements, for a second. Um, so the max per company thing, you it wasn't clear to me whether you're talking about max per company on a per SDK level or overall across all SDKs, because I, you, we, we can't, yeah, okay. As a, overall, I, I think, I think, so this is, so where I think what I want to avoid is if we're having a, if we're having kind of a, a governance rule that a lot, that that says you, know, you are in and you are out and we're doing this as, as a maintainer, like who do we give commit rights? Mm -hmm. And we should have a governance mechanism that prevents a single company from being able to, to effectively control that. Yeah, but you're talking at the global level, not just one SDK. Yeah, I'm thinking, of, yes, the global level, because we all, I mean, we need to go and all pool, pool resources and there is probably, uh, there will be companies which are really, really interested in doing something in whatever Haskell. And uh, that might be a bit of a niche opinion. And so that's certainly something where 
just one person or two, two people from the same team might be doing this. So instituting that rule, that rule there doesn't really make any sense. But um, like at the, if we, if we allow, if we admit folks kind of at a steering committee level with everybody who's a committer um, uh, having a vote, then uh, we should figure out a mechanism for how we can go and prevent that a single company can go and take that over. Yeah, that's what I was about to ask you about. Because <clears throat> it sounds like you're headed down the path of adding a layer. Because we, we kind of have a layer right now, but it's a very, very informal layer, which is who shows up to this call, right? <laughs> um, it, well, you, yeah. started, you started with the voting thing, so I'm just, I'm just reacting to that. Yeah, yeah I know. I, I'm, I, that, mm. Sorry. No, no, no. It's all good. I'm, 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 I'm thinking. I don't think we're going to be able to decide this today um, because yeah. this is a this is a big freaking decision. We need everybody's input on. Um, but I'm trying to figure out. The, the, so there are two things running through my head. One is at a governance across the SDK level. Speaking just for myself, I, I would personally prefer to avoid anything too formal yet because I haven't found a need to introduce anything yet. I think. Mm -hmm. A, I think a formal structure within an SDK of having well-defined maintainers, which we already do have, sort of, and now would be a little more formalized with this list above. I think that's definitely needed because you need to be able to resolve, you know, disputes at an SDK level. Yeah. Um, so I think that's definitely needed. Um, it's just when we start talking about uh, company representation within a particular SDK, the max per company, I'm in. Uh, that that one scares the bejeebers out of me because I don't necessarily think, for example, the C sharp one is, has anything wrong with it right now, right? Even though the, you guys are both Microsoft, right? Um, the Sergey, the thing you were talking about of getting representation from companies who want to participate and from end users, I, I while I agree, I, I I want their input. I'm not sure that anybody should necessarily get maintainership status without putting in the work, right? Just because company X says, hey, we want to join forces and we got 10 people who want to join, that's great, but they have to do the PRs and, 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 and do the work before the, the, each individual person would become a maintainer. At least that's my thought process there. And I see a cube piling up, so let me, let me pause on that. Now, those are just my current thought processes on this. Sergey, your hands up first. So first of all, I absolutely agree that uh, without commitment, um, making someone a maintainer would be uh, simply a mistake, uh, even if he's loud or anything. Um, so I agree here. Also, uh, maybe PRs is not the uh, best metric. Maybe commitment can also be, can also be counted by uh, issues reported and discussed and uh, other PRs reviewed and other open source activities that are not measured by uh, PRs. Um, it's just one thing I wanted to avoid, just measuring ZPRs and lines of code, basically. Got it. Okay. Uh, Slinky? Oh, okay. Uh, no, I just want to say that I completely agree with you, Doug, that uh, if we want to put some metrics about companies, that's the point, but uh, if we don't see commitment, uh, I, I personally will not... I personally would never love to accept somebody as a maintainer if he hadn't did some some work. And review is a thing. Uh, I agree with the fact that we should also count review. But at some point, uh, somebody must write code. I mean, I mean, I, I, I'm not I, I'm, I'm not the kind of people that likes somebody to being a maintainer without at least writing code. So I think it's important. Okay. Sergey, your hands up again. Yeah, just maybe a quick one. So uh, on the other hand, if we want to count the code, we should also make sure that PRs should be processed in order submitted because uh, we have seen it in the Java SDK when uh, a PR was submitted, but then rejected by the maintainer and recreated uh, the way he sees it. Um, and it kind of uh, stops uh, external contributors from submitting code because uh, the main danger disagrees. So okay. maybe more work on, on the review could help here. Okay, the, 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 that's, a, that's a slightly different topic, right? That, that gets into sort of PR processing process. <laughs> and let's hold off on that one for a different time. That's a, that's a different topic. Yeah, um, not saying it's not worthy of discussion. I'm just saying I'd, I'd like to focus more on 
gather, gathering ideas for the rules to became, make, become maintainers. Um, okay, any, any other sort of things you guys want to add to the list of considerations? Um, is there some sort of definite process from uh, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation that we can inherit? I mean, the bureaucracy would be, wouldn't be something good to uh, have, <laughs> but at least maybe, I mean, I'm pretty sure there are some other projects that were thinking about the same uh, thing. Uh, so maybe you can get some inspiration from them as we are inside the foundation, not just uh, yeah. projects. I'd have to double check. I, I offhand, I don't think there's anything at the CNCF level itself. There may be other projects within the CNCF that have good ideas that we could steal from, but I'm not sure I've seen anything at the CNCF level, but I'll, I'll double check and see. Um, maybe I'm just forgetting. Okay. So I uh, think, oh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, if, it, if it can help in another community, I participate, uh, the Canadian community. Uh, what we do to accept uh, so we have two levels. Uh, the first is, uh, what's the name, a reviewer? Reviewer, something like that. I think it's a, a reviewer, reviewer and the maintainer or something like that, yeah. Reviewer and approver, yeah. So, and of course it's a bigger project, so it's, it's of course uh, more different. Uh, but uh, what you need to do to become an approver is that uh, you need a number or review uh, of PRs not authored by you, and then you need a number of PRs done. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, uh, is cut there? No. Uh, anyway, that's if I recall correctly, that's how it works. So yeah. Oops. Jeez, I can't type today. Okay. I'm, I'm not saying it's the best process, but that could be an idea. Okay. Okay. Would anybody like to volunteer to actually take all these good ideas that people have said and actually write up a more formal process or proposal, I should say, for a process? No one wants to do process stuff. I'm shocked. <laughs> okay. Well, I could try, but. Uh, or maybe with some, like with a little bit of your help and maybe pointers to uh, uh, people whom I can ask, uh, maybe there are some other uh, examples in the foundation or something. Uh, so I'll do the research and I'll try to come up with a proposal. Um, that would be wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. What's the process for, the, for defining the process? Would that be a, a PR or something like that that we could all contribute to or comment on? Actually, I was kind of wondering whether we need a sort of a global repo that spans all SDKs and we could point to that for things related to governance or whether we just say, when we finally agreed on what the text should look like, we then just do a PR inside each repo. Um, can't, we, can't we use just the spec repo? Uh, I mean, now we use the spec repo for the SDK requirements. That is true. Which, by the way, needs to be <laughs> updated as a document. Yeah. But the requirements do kind of, I mean, like there is also, there was also some stuff not very long ago about, you know, some, some guidance on how to land PRs and things like that. All of that stuff might be useful in a, in a single repository because you like, it's not clear where to go look for that stuff. Yeah. Well, so we already, we already added some of them to, to the repositories. So yeah, some, some repos that. do have their own, yes. Mm -hmm. um, I guess the question is, when it comes to process like that, do we want a single, because for, so for example, Lance, picking on your repo for a sec, um, you guys define a process or at least a set of recommendations for even things like uh, uh, tagging of, of issues uh, in the name or something like that, right? Is it a feature versus a bug request or chore, that kind of stuff? I can't remember the exact terms you guys used, right? Um, is that something that people would want to try to standardize across all SDKs or are people going to say, yeah, that might be fine for, you know, Lance's repo, but Clemens, you don't want that kind of process. You know, what do you guys think? Do you want commonality or not? Well, I'll say in particular for the, the JavaScript repository, that, that process that basically is, um, you know, have your commits prefixed with 
uh, basically a subsection of the what the repository is, like you said, bug fix or feature or whatever. Um, that feeds into a tool that does things like uh, generates change logs, uh, creates the, the release tag and stuff like that, um, so that none of that has to be done by hand. Um, that's definitely a, uh, a, a node specific kind of tool. There may be other tools like that with other languages, but I'm not aware of them. Okay. Clemens, were you going to say something? I thought it so you come off mute. Uh, no. <laughs> then, well, I'm, I'm going to pick on you anyway. Do you want commonality between, say, the C Sharp and the other repos, or do you not really care? Uh, I have no strong opinion. Okay. Um, well, Lance, in terms of trying to have a commonality or trying to have commonality of process across them, would you like to, I was gonna say submit a pull request, but let me, so let me back up. Do people want a single SDK repo to hold cross SDK things or do you wanna just create like a folder inside the main spec repo? Uh, to, to do what, to do the governance? Just to put any, any documentation that might span the, the SDKs, like for example, the, um, as you said, the, the SDK requirement stock is in the spec repo today. Should it, should it continue to live in that repo or should we create a special repo just for SDK common things? For me, we should keep the spec repo. <laughs> I think okay. we're already using the spec repo for uh, things like governance. Uh, so I just sent a link to the file. Um, it describes more um, generic governance of uh, the project, but we can also be more specific and maybe um, it can be added to this document actually, how we select new maintainers, for example. Yeah, because that, yeah, that, that, that government stock definitely is about the, the cloud event spec work itself and the other specs. It's not, it's not meant to necessarily cover the SDKs. Um, okay, so I'll tell you what, I'm not hearing a whole bunch of people speak up saying we need a brand new repo just for common governance or other types of documentation for the SDKs. So why don't we look at using the spec repo now? So Lance, do you, do you want to formally propose a common process? And if so, I would recommend a PR against the main repo then, but it's up to you whether you want to actually propose that or not. Formally proposed, what did you say? A common process across all SDKs in terms of um, uh, how to manage PRs, issues and stuff like that. Kind of like what you did for the, for the JavaScript one. Sure, I can do that. Okay. And add that as, and submit a PR to the spec repo for that? Yeah, I, I still think we're, we should probably create a, an SDK directory there um, to put all these things into, because otherwise the top level, the top level is already too big in my opinion. So I think we should have an SDK directory um, um, to put all this stuff into, and I could work on doing that. But yeah, a PR to the main repo would be good. Okay, sure. Cool. Okay. Um, so Sergey, you work on that. Yeah, Lance, PR for proposed common process. Um, SDK star in spec repo. Okay. Anything else relative to governance? So I will do this. I will create the separate teams. Sergey will create a PR um, as a proposed process for how to add maintainers. Answer that. I'll do that. Okay. Anything else about governance or anything from that space? Until or we jump over to Lance's topic here. Okay, moving on, Lance. Um, no, <laughs> I have that AI and I have not done squat with it and I apologize. Does someone else want to take a stab at it? Mm, I think I can do that. You wanna take a stab at that? That'd be wonderful. I just haven't had a chance yet. I apologize. Lance, is that? Uh, sufficient or what, did you want to, I'm sorry, go ahead, Slinky. What should I, what should I do in particular? Uh, like do some, do some document explaining how we wanna. I think we're looking for is just a, in this particular case now, it would be a PR to the spec repo mm -hmm. explaining uh, when or what kind of review process would happen on an SDK to determine whether it's still active, whether it should be archived, um, and that's about it, I think, right? Um, 
I don't know. I'm not sure what we meant by quality of service and SLA, except for the except uh, for just determining when it's dead. Yeah, I think I think uh, I, I was one of the people saying that uh, uh, with SLA, I meant the fact that somebody, even if it, if it's a maintainer, there we should do security patches and so on. Yeah, I think that's the reason why we brought that. Anyway, okay. yeah. Okay. I, obviously, I think if we actually create a separate governance doc that talks about things like how to add maintainers and stuff, I think that proposal fits very nicely in that same governance doc. So we can look at merging it later. But for right now, you know, create a separate PR with a separate doc and we can worry about the what, what you know, comes the shape to later. My mind, what comes to my mind is that uh, uh, we should have somehow like a, a group of people across SDK maintainers, uh, which is, uh, for example, able to, to do, uh, uh, I mean, we, we should do security patches when uh, something is not a, a maintainer and so on. I mean, some kind of, some kind of POC, how do I say that? <laughs> I, I'm not good with names, but you get, you get what I mean. Uh, that gets into adding a layer, right? Yeah, but well, but that's, that's what we said before, right? <laughs> well, uh, we said maybe, we, we hadn't decided yet. I mean, okay. um, I, I, honestly, I, it, it, again, just, just my opinion. I, I, this is not me as chair of anything or co-chair of anything. This is just my opinion. Personally, I would prefer to make it so that if there is a cross SDK decision that needs to be made, and we actually have to come down to a formal vote as opposed to just people just you know, come to consensus. But if we actually require a formal vote, I would prefer if it was the maintainers of each SDK are the ones who get the vote. And that's it. Sorry, I wouldn't want to say introduce another layer. Can you repeat, please? Say it again? Can you, can you repeat what you said, please? I, if, if, if we required a formal vote on something that, that that crossed SDKs, I would want the, the people who were allowed to vote to be the SDK maintainers themselves. So for example, this list okay, up here okay. would be the people, this, this would in essence become the TOC, right? Every maintainer from every SDK becomes a member of the TOC, even though I wouldn't want to call it TOC. Okay. That's my initial thought, just to keep it simple. The only downside to that is of course, is if one company has a boatload of maintainers, and one particular SDK, they can overrule other people, but I'm not sure how you can ever avoid that without getting into really complicated rules like, you know, number of maximum people per company, and I just I'd like to avoid that. Well, well, if, well. If you if you wanna if you wanna solve that, you need to do something like that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, you, that, yeah, you need, add, you need to add a level. You're right. Uh, I don't want to unless we, until people think we actually have a need for it. I'd rather really avoid it because we haven't needed one up till now. Well, but the the, the discussion that Sergey did, well, I think, went in this direction. Somehow, I mean, and, and but but also it come, uh, like uh, uh, another thing that comes to my mind is, for example, let's assume we have one of the SDKs, uh, which we don't want we don't want to arch uh, archive because there is no need because it works it's updated uh but the maintainer is not alive mm -hmm. what should we do uh, I, I, i'm not prone to archive uh an library that just works uh only because the maintainer is not alive so i expect that somebody from the larger group even if it has a little knowledge of the of the language uh could take a little bit time just to do security patches stuff like that do you get yeah. what i mean I yeah mean, it's uh, at some point, I mean, this is open source. So at some point, somebody is up here. Yeah. And I expect that somebody, is, uh, there is a process to say, okay, uh, the person X uh, should be the one that does security patches, uh, even if it, it has a little knowledge of, uh, of the language. Of the yeah, language. and I, I, think, I think some of the stuff that you're talking about there would, I would hope would appear in this, in this document that you're gonna write up a, a proposal for. Right, because I agree with you. Just because no one is active on an SDK doesn't necessarily mean we should archive it because people are using it, right? And we don't want it to, to go away. Um, and at that point, if something needs to change in that SDK, I think that's why we have these, these regular phone calls, right? Someone can identify the issue, something needs to happen and we just need to get a volunteer to make it happen. 
even if they're not a, a maintainer of that particular SDK. I think I don't think we need to. Uh, I mean, if you you can talk about that in in your proposal if you want, but I don't think we necessarily have to th spend too much time on it. I think that will kind of fix itself. I'm hoping anyway. Does that make any sense? Well, I hope so. <laughs> okay. Well, let, let, I, me let me try to write down the proposal. Yeah. And then. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. We don't need to. We don't need to solve everything right now. Yeah. yeah but, I, I mean, uh, the, my my guess is that we are going uh, at some point to adding this uh, another la uh, layer. That, that's, we'll that's just what I wanted to say. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we will. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. Any other topics you guys want to bring up? I haven't really given a lot of uh, thought to this yet, but um, the the fact that we keep saying SDK over and over again, and all the the repos are named SDK. Um, there's there was a proposal in the JavaScript repo to to change the name to not have to not have that acronym in there SDK because SDK actually implies something bigger and broader and and stuff like that. Are there is there governance or guidance or anything on if names change and what they should be changed, uh, you know, whether or not, I don't know what I'm, what I'm trying to get at. I'm <laughs> curious about this. I, I, I know of no rules either from the CNCF or within this group that we've discussed at that level. Um, I think if we wanted to make that kind of name change, it's just something we as a group would decide on our own, um, whether it's a good or a bad and what we change it to would be up to us to decide. I think that'd be a, pretty massive discussion though, because people probably reference our repos already. Yeah, so, I, I totally agree. And, and modules and stuff like that. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's worth it, it, you know, I, I think Grant is the one who brought it up, right? So I think it's a, it's an interesting discussion. Um, it's up to you guys and what you want to do with that and with that discussion though. So. Well, for Rust, what I did is that I took the only name available. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Any other topics? All right. In that case, we are done. Thank you, everybody, for the discussion. And we will talk again next week. Thank you for one. your continued leadership. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank Have you. Have a good rest of your day. Bye. Okay, bye. -bye. bye.